hi guys welcome back to my channel how are you i hope you subscribe if you haven't please do click notifications so if you saw my um oldie shop the other day you will know that i bought some items so i could make the fish pie out of this month's slimming world magazine on page 48 so um the ingredients say um for the first step of this meal that I need to put a small swede, 400 grams of potatoes and 400 grams of carrots um, into a steamer. Now I have to confess, when I moved house, I binned my steamer because I didn't really use it that often and it was old and I just decided that um, it was space that I didn't want to bring into the new house. And I keep meaning to buy another one and I never have. So, so yeah, four years later, I still don't have a steamer. So I'm actually going to boil my carrots and my potatoes and my swede. So I know that's not what the recipe says, guys, but it's still going to give me soft um, potatoes, carrots, and swede, which would be for the mash on top. So it's not the end of the world. So you don't have a steamer either, guys. It's okay. We can still do this menu without any hiccups. So what I'm gonna do first of all is pop my uh, potatoes, carrots, and swede into some water and I'll boil it. Um, now it said to steam for 25 minutes, so I'm gonna boil it for about the same time, but I will keep checking it. I don't want it too mushy, but I don't want it too hard either. So I'll get cracking on with that and then I'll show you the next steps, okay? Right, okay, so while my root vegetable is cooking, I'm gonna carry on the rest of the, um, the recipe and Lola's eating again. You can't believe it, can you? Okay, so I've got my burgoff pan which I'm just heating up. It won't take long, and so I'm not going to add any oil, which I know normally people do. And I'm going to add to that spring onions. So I've got the four spring onions which I've chopped, and I always chop the end bits as well because I think the dark bits are great. There's a bit of carrot in there because I use the same chopping board to chop the carrots with, which is absolutely fine because it's not like it's raw meat or anything like that. So. Just gonna pop those in and it says to cook gently for about five minutes until softened. So that's exactly what I will do. Right, so that's cooked for a little while now. So what it says is add a splash of your stock, which I'm just going to do. I think splash is a bizarre thing to say, isn't it? Because splash is a little blob which makes no difference. So just going to add what I think is right and then obviously we need to add in corn flour and this is where it's bizarre because if you're adding corn flour into it at this stage there isn't a lot of sauce um, in which to be adding the corn flour but obviously the recipe knows what it's doing so I'm going to add my corn flour in and then it requires you to add in some mustard powder and it's only two teaspoons if you don't like mustard powder I suppose you could omit it but you might lose some of the flavours. I actually love mustard. I was known as a kid uh, when I used to sleepwalk to sit in the pantry with a teaspoon and a jar of mustard and just eat away. So I think that's where my affinity for uh, mustard has come from. Now what's quite interesting is <laughs> my um, corn has gone quite gloopy there actually, which is a bit bizarre, but I'm sure it's fine. Okay, and it says to mix it into a paste which, yeah, I'd say it probably is getting into a paste. Obviously, uh, stirring continuously, and then you add the remaining of the uh, stock. So I'm gonna add the remaining stock into there. Now, one thing they said you could add as a little bit of an extra kick is a bit of um, chilli sauce. Now, my hubby and I do like a little heat, so I actually think one level tablespoon of chilli sauce is a must. So we're going to go for it. There we go. So you then need to cook this and stir it continuously until a smooth sauce is produced. And it boils for two, three minutes until the sauce is thick enough to coat the back of the spoon. And then I add the parsley, peas, and the corn and cook for two minutes to taste and then stir. 
Right, what I should also add is the milk, so I'm going to pop that in. Okay, so that's gone in, and I need to keep stirring continuously, and it should start to bubble and make a, a really nice smooth sauce, apparently. So, and when it covers the back of the spoon, I know it's ready. Okay. Right, so it says, this is ready when it coats the back of a spoon, so let me put a spoon in, and that coats, so that's perfect. So now I need to add in my sweet corn and my peas, that goes in, and my parsley. Now it says flat leaf parsley, but I actually grow normal parsley in my garden, so I'm going to pop that in. I'm not going to buy parsley for the sake of buying parsley. Um, I'm sure someone's going to tell me the flavours are very different, I don't know. I just want to um, use what's in my garden. So they're going to go in, this is cook for two minutes and then stir in the fish. So that's what I'm going to do. Right, okay, so I'm going to stir my fish in. Now the recipe asks that you use 200 grams of skinless, boneless cod, salmon and smoked haddock, but I bought a fish pie mix from Aldi, which you know, if you saw my um, shopping haul, and this actually contains um, pollock, smoked pollock, and salmon. And do you know what? A fish dish is a fish dish, and you can use whatever fish you like, I think. Um, you know, it's this is sustainable, and it you know, it says here responsibly sourced, so I'm happy with this. So I'm going to pop all this in, and I do like smoked fish, so it's hubby. So we're going to pop it in, that's gone in there. I'm going to cook it for two three minutes. And then we're going to remove from the heat. We will add some pepper um, as a seasoning, but no salt. I couldn't find it. Right, okay. I've got it. So I'm going to put pepper in, no salt because I don't use salt. And I think if you've got stock in it, why would you add salt? Now this pepper is quite spicy. And I love it, as you know. Um, so, but normal pepper isn't probably as spicy. I'm just addicted to this. So I'm going to pop that in, I'm going to cook it for two minutes, I'm going to turn off the heat, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mash the um, root vegetables, and then we're going to start making up the uh, fish pie. And this actually looks amazing. It's the first time I've ever made it, as you know. Um, and I'll follow the instructions to the letter. So we will see how it turns out, and what it tastes like at the end of it. Right, so that's cooked for a couple of minutes and the fish looks amazing. So I'm going to set that aside just over here. And I want to show you the veg. Okay, ow, it's just hot. Right, so I'm going to bring that over. So I've mashed that up. Now the recipe tells you to um, pop the, the fish sauce with the fish um, into your dish and then top it with your veg, which is fine, I get that, and then add your cheese. But you know what? I'm going to be a rebel here, guys, because I just think, actually, if you put the cheese into the mash, it's better. What do you think? I mean, you know, I'm all following recipes, but just sometimes go off beat. I've obviously grated some of the lowest grate, as you know, I always do with everything. So I'm going to find a wooden spoon and something to hold this because it's quite hot. Um, and I'm just going to mix my cheese in with the hot mash. Okay. I find if you don't do this, and you put the cheese on top, the cheese starts to brown before everything else is really cooked through. And I don't know, I just I just prefer, this is my preference guide. If you want to follow the magazine, that's absolutely for you. But look, it makes it so much more creamy. Look at that. I mean, that is just divine on its own. It's just amazing. Right, so I am now going to dish this into the oven proof dish and we'll get in the oven and we'll get it baked. Right, so, I don't know if my sauce is more liquid than anybody else's, I don't know. But let's put it into the uh, oven-proof dish. I don't think you want a dry fish pie, do you? I don't. Definitely, you can smell the fish. I mean, oh my God, this is, smells amazing. And um, with the um, smokiness of the pollock. And pollock is a really good substitution for cod. And, you know, they sell it in a lot of fish and chip shops these days um, as a substitution, so it's so sustainable cod can be overfished so now i'm going to add in my vegetable mash and this is probably where my sauce is probably too runny because it will sink 
you know what? I don't care because actually the flavours are still going to be here. For me, it's all about the flavours of the sauce and everything else. So maybe I should have cooked it down. I don't know. Maybe not steaming the vegetables is wrong. But if you know me and you follow my channel, you know that I love making up recipes. I love tweaking things that I see. And I've not really had a bad meal because of it. So I'm counting the fact that I've added the cheese in early and maybe that there's more sauce than there should be. And maybe it's because I didn't actually, the only thing I didn't measure here is I didn't measure the vegetable stock. I'll be honest, okay? Because I think, you know what? You can't beat a good creamy sauce. Right, that's done. So that's going in the oven now. And the recipe tells me to pop it in the oven for, I need to check this, I actually don't even know. Right. So that's going into the oven now for 30 minutes. Wow, that's quite a long time actually. Um, cause in the chick, the, sorry, the uh, fish has been cooked for a little while, but let's pop it in and we'll see what happens. Right guys, here is tonight's dinner, the fish pie from the Simulud magazine. And it looks amazing, it smells amazing. So I just need to get my hubby in here and dig in. Now I could present it really nicely on two plates, but it's one of those dishes I think that we both just need to get a spoon in there and just take out what we want and just eat it. It's got vegetables in there, so I'm not sure it needs to add any more. On the magazine it said add broccoli and etc. but I don't think we need this. What we probably should do, actually, is some garlic bread, and I might put some garlic bread in now quickly, because I think this, if I leave it for five, 10 minutes, will be even nicer. It's so hot at the moment, you can't eat it. So do you know what? I am gonna to run to my garage quickly, put some garlic bread in my oven. I'm gonna have it with this, definitely. Right, so this is done, and we have some garlic bread to go with it. I know you say we do half, but tonight I've done the whole of it, and then we'll leave what's left. But this looks amazing. So I think the proof is in the pudding. We need to eat it, so let's get cracking. Right, so that was my fish pie from the Slimwood magazine, and actually it was lovely. And although I was a bit apprehensive that I had too much liquid, when I actually cut into it, the liquid had absorbed, so it wasn't runny at all. It was just absolutely perfect. And in fact, um, there wasn't much left, because Hubby and I really enjoyed it. And I think the mash just made it, and um, putting the cheese in with the mash just, oh, it was lovely. And in fact, I'm gonna do that as a combination um, for other meals. So not necessarily to top a food like that, but maybe as a side dish, because having the swede, the carrot and the potato together with the cheese, it was really nice. And you could even, I think, put it into patties and then cook it as a potato or, like a, you know, like a veggie cake um, and add some sweet corn into it and things like that. So I don't know, but it was really, really, really nice. So I'm definitely doing that one again. Um, there is another recipe in the magazine that my hubby really wants me to try. So I did get some of the ingredients, as you know, from my oldie shop. So I'll do that um, another day and I will share that with you too. I think it's always good, I don't know about you, um, for other people to try some recipes in the magazine for you and tell you what they really think. Because, you know, you look in the magazine and not just in any magazine, you think, oh my God, that looks amazing. But when you actually cook it, it isn't normally as nice. So if somebody else has done it for you and gives you some honest feedback, I think that's always useful. If you don't agree, let me know below. Um, so yes guys, so that's it for me today. You have a lovely Wednesday and I will catch you on Sunday where I have a really delicious chicken dish for you to try. All right guys, you have a good week and I'll speak to you soon. Okay, bye, bye. Oh, subscribe, notifications and give me a thumbs up. All right, I'll speak to you soon. Bye, bye.